Chapter 10. Can you imagine an alien world? Mrs Solomon gestures towards the posters that she stuck up around the walls of our classroom. These show scenes from some of my favourite science fiction films. There's Luke Skywalker riding a tauntaun across the icy wastes of Hoth, its grey white fur almost lost in the snowy landscape. I can see the lush jungle moon of Pandora with its floating mountains and forests teeming with alien life. There's Superman's dad standing alone as Krypton burns. It's like Class 6 is the sun at the centre of the science fiction solar system. All these alien worlds have been imagined by artists and directors, our teacher says, pointing to each picture in turn. Cloud cities and mechanical planets, crystal mountains and desert moons. Now, I want you to use your artistic skills to create your own alien worlds. On the desk in front of me is a large sheet of poster paper. Pots of coloured pencils, pastels, wax cranes and charcoal mark the border with Minty's half of the desk. She's got first dibs on all the best felt tips and is already starting to draw the outline of some crazy alien scene. Minty's the best artist, artist in our class. In fact, she's probably the best artist in the whole school. She does these brilliant cartoons in the school newspaper and when Mrs Solomon wanted some scenery for our class musical of Macbeth, Minty helped paint this really spooky castle with headless ghosts and skeletons everywhere. When we did the play, our head teacher, Mr Hayes, even had to cover up some of the bits of scenery because the year one kids found them too scary. I bet the alien world she creates is going to look amazing. Mrs Solomon floats around the class in her flowery dress, throwing out her usual words of encouragement. Beautiful yellows and greens, Jasmine. Amazing patterns, Lila. Lovely bold, li bold lines, Aaron. Are those tentacles? I look back down at my blank sheet of paper. I don't have a clue what to draw. Are you stuck? Minty asks, chewing on her pen lid as she looks up from her cartoon of an intergalactic scrapyard. In this, a huge metal dinosaur is munching on a pile of rusting robots, the jet black sky filled with the Death Star moon. If you can't think of anything, then just draw an ice world, the simple, the only colour you need is white. I shake my head, my mind as blank as my piece of paper. I don't think Mrs Solomon would be very impressed with an invisible planet, but before Minty can offer another, offer another suggestion, an insistent buzz sounds out from my trouser pocket. Is that somebody's mobile phone? Mrs Solomon inquires, a look of irritation flashing across her features. Remember the school rules, please. If you don't turn it off right away, it's getting confiscated. She glances around to look at the culprit. Digging deep in my pocket, I clamp my hand around the phone to mute the buzzing sound. As my fingers close around his metal case, I feel a strange vibration right behind my eyes. I blink. The buzzing of my phone instantly re replaced by a silence that seems to make time stand still. Have you finished, Jamie? I open my eyes to see Mrs Solomon now standing over my desk, her face creased in admiration. For a second I feel totally confused. How did she get from there to there, there to here so quickly? Then I look down at my desk, my blank sheet of paper now filled with the most incredible picture. Twin suns shine in a bright purple sky above a vast forest filled with giant plants and ferns. Black flowers bl bloom in every direction and rising above these I can see huge golden spirals, shimmering like trapped sunlight. The shape of these unearthly skyscrapers is the same as the spiral icon on my phone. But as I stare in wonder at this impossible picture, I see that each golden spiral is actually a vast alien city winding into the sky. This is amazing, Mrs Solomon says, peering int intently at the poster that covers my desk. How did you capture such incredible detail with oil pastels? I look down at my hands. My fingers are smeared with purple, green and gold, a rainbow of pastels scattered across my desk. In the picture, the colours almost seem to be alive like this alien landscape is just frozen in time. And I really draw this. When I close my eyes, this page was blank, and then, when I opened them a split second later, this amazing world was here. I must be going mad. What an imagination, my teacher murmurs as Minty stares at my, stares at my picture open mouthed. But as I wrap my brain trying to work out what's happening to me, the only thing I know for sure is that the mind that imagined the picture isn't mine. So whose imagination is it?